ludicrous shoulder pads and excessive makeup now on BBC One. Yeah, so what else is new? The ball went over his head! Oh dear. Welcome to They Think It's All Over. This week in the second of our specials, we'll be taking our regulars back to the 80s, or in David's case, back to his 80s. <laughs> With David and Jonathan is possibly the greatest snooker player of all time and a former Scottish sports personality of the year, a title currently held by David Seaman. It's Stephen <laughs> Henry. <laughs> Weird Gary and Rory is a European and World Championship gold medalist who made his name in the army where he not only ran the 400 metres inside 45 seconds, he also stayed six inches ahead of the sergeant with the broom handle. <laughs> Chris Akabusi! <laughs> we kick off the 80s with our excuses around, David, Jonathan and Stephen. It's the other best player in snooker history for you, Steve Davis. Here he is in his darkest hour, one in the morning, losing his world title to Dennis Taylor in 1985. No. Yeah. He's done it. So how come the finest player in snooker history, give or take one, lost his world title, David's team? Before we start on that, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> May I just explain my appearance? I'm meant to be adamant today, so later on I'll be singing Prince Charming for you, the ant rap, then I'll be throwing an exhaust manifold through a window and trying to kill you all with a starter pistol. <laughs> Rory, I'm not quite sure who you're meant to be. No, neither am I, actually. <laughs> Is it? Let's, let's, let's throw it over Sorry. to the ladies and gentlemen. Any ideas? Yeah. No, 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 I know it is. It's Miss Grease, 1984. <laughs> I don't know the size of the bird that shot on your head, Gary, but you're due for a lot of good luck. <laughs> Same one that shot on your face. <laughs> and it's nice to see David looking magnificent, and Steve Henry made no f***ing effort whatsoever. <laughs> Isn't it nice to have Chris on the show, ladies and gentlemen, with that distinctive, the Akabusi chuckle, as I believe it's called. Oh, there you go, big guy. You, he laughs at just about everything, but we've taken the safety precaution of sitting him next to Gary, so we should have a few quiet moments. <laughs> 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 Could we have a look at the clip again? No. Oh, it freeze it there. Now, look. I think Steve Davis was put off by the sudden realisation that he was playing Thor a Hurd. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face it, that would put you off your stroke, wouldn't it, gentlemen? Eh? <laughs> you play snooker, uh, Steve. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> One thing that's always intrigued me about snooker, and I've played a bit, and I was pretty good, you know, I was pretty good. <laughs> what I noticed, and I don't know if you can, you know, bear this out in the professional world, which I imagine is not dissimilar, is when you used to play with your mates, occasionally when someone leaned up for a shot, either to psych you out or just click an up it, they would occasionally let one rip. <laughs> <laughs> there is a few silent fart merchants. So they actually let them go during the game? Yeah. There's the reason why we walk around the table so many times, it's not <laughs> silent. <laughs> Hey, Stephen, have you ever played Lady Snooker? What snooker? Lady Snooker. <laughs> <laughs> no, you ever played I Lady know. Snooker? <laughs> yeah. What do you do is, you go out on a Monday night, you have to find a redhead. Second night, you find a beautiful <laughs> black lady. Then you go for a redhead, then a beautiful black lady. You want to kind of get out the game before you hit green, ideally. <laughs> <laughs> I've no idea though what the answer could be for Steve this. Is that jacket? Is that suede or chamois leather? <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever it is, the car's clean. Okay, you, could, you look like you've come dressed as a carjacker. <laughs> 
That was your laugh. Now look at that. <laughs> you don't do a match. We're all dead. <laughs> Why did Steve Davis lose? I reckon a combination of Dennis's well glasses and perhaps he just, for the first time in his career, bottled it. I'll give you three points for the glasses. Well done, yeah. The glasses are Well done, Steve recently claimed that he was so nervous he was holding his cue too tightly, although Taylor himself reckoned it was all to do with the unique pair of glasses he'd had commissioned. We're not saying that Steve is dull, but in the recent LG Cup semi-final, this is the effect he had on one member of the crowd. <laughs> the sleeper. <laughs> Gary, Rory and Chris, tennis for you and a man who regularly turned the air blue. 40-15. Clark, please, the ball was out. You think I stand there for my health to get jerks like this to do that? <laughs> Peep brains like that? Well, I think that's quite uncalled for. <laughs> Now, our question concerns a different John McEnroe tantrum from the 1981 Wimbledon, the one where he said, you are the pits of the world, and called the umpire a disgrace to mankind. However, the All England Tennis Club won't let us show you that, even though it happened 22 years ago, because the club wishes to discourage the use of such material. They are quite happy for us to show you great moments in the history of British women's tennis, so we'll do that instead, just as soon as we find a hand-cranked black and white projector. <laughs> So, Gary's <laughs> team, what was John McEnroe's excuse for saying all those horrible things? Was he annoyed because the court was double booked? That really pisses me off. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the private lessons, I hate that. Did you ever whinge at referees, Gary? Did you ever sort of have a go at them? Yeah, in a, in a nice way. <laughs> <laughs> you say, I think you got that wrong, Russ. <laughs> I'm terrified. I'm terrified. Honest, no honest, way. I did, did sometimes. Yeah. There was once. I said, it was a really bad decision. But you don't have any officials, do you? Um, we, we, we do, we do, we do. Yeah, we do. We have we're marksmen. Make sure when you marksmen? start. Marksmen? Marksmen. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to start, start the race. Yeah, that's just to make sure you run in the first place. <laughs> and you're very open and honest about your religion as well. You're Christian, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, because... <laughs> and you came across Jesus Christ you, in a hotel room that you were reading the Bible, weren't you? I was, you, I was up in the Commonwealth Games up in 1986. Yeah, because I, I found the Lord in a hotel room as well, because there were, you know, a few hookers and a lot of drugs and <laughs> drink around, and in the course of the evening I did have occasion to go down on my knees, and then a voice out of nowhere said, Rory, that's enough. It's me old mate Angus Deaton. <laughs> <laughs> I used to swear at Wimbledon. <laughs> yeah, when Vinnie Jones grabbed my bollocks. <laughs> In fact, I believe I believe he still got them. <laughs> well, <laughs> says he dressed like that. <laughs> I saw a uh, the fantastic piece of footage once comparing American commentary to English commentary on tennis when McEnroe was in his prime. And you heard the American host go, oh my God, Mac has gone crazy this time, they're going to find him, we may well be out of the tournament. i got Bob here from CNBC. Bob, what do you think? Is this the end of the world for Mac? I don't know, I think Mac maybe has gone too far, but I have Dave here from ABC, and they're all these guys going crazy. <laughs> and then it contrasted the English reaction, which was Dan Maskell, God bless him, and then you just saw the footage, nothing was said, and after about a minute you had to go, oh dear. <laughs> 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 Now, I can think his excuse, or he may have actually uh, meant it, was that he was trying to motivate himself and said that the disgrace to mankind was himself. And he was saying, You are so the pits. He's correct for three he points. Well done, yeah. <laughs> McEnroe reckons that it's fine for top players to show passion and anger following disputed decisions. Only the other day, when our own Tim Henman had a line call go against him, he got his father to write a strongly worded letter to the Telegraph. <laughs> it has to be said, though, that the most successful Wimbledon player of all time, Pete Sampras, has never had a tantrum on court. When he gets annoyed at a decision, he just sits in his tyre and sulks. <laughs> and... Every week. 
And at the end of that round, <laughs> David's team have three points and Gary's team have three points. Time for our handbags round now, all about the bad blood between sports people. David's team, it's those great middle distance rivals, Sebastian Coe and Steve Ovet for you. Here's Ovet beating Coe to the tape in the 800 metres at the Moscow Olympics of 1980. Steve Ovet coming home to take the gold medal for Great Britain to beat Sebastian Coe against the silver. Here up gets the bronze. Now Sebastian Coe with the silver. The handshake with hardly a glance. Co later had his revenge in the 1500 metres, but sadly the only thing the two could agree on was the reason for the feud. So what was it, David Steen? You know, he's Lord Co now, isn't he, I believe? Yeah, but it's only a life period. It's just one of those sort of cheap Yeah, ones. he became Lord Co. <laughs> <laughs> Ovet was naturally fast, wasn't he? Where Seb Co, I get the feeling that he learned to run fast because he went to... Didn't he go to a, a posh school? It was Lord Buggerton's school for boys. <laughs> Where did you go to school? <laughs> I went to Leighton Senior High for boys, and then in the 80s, there was Leighton Senior High for girls, and in the 80s, they renamed it Winnie Mandela High for girls. <laughs> and yeah, they changed it back but... sharpish about three years later. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't like question of sport, is it? No. no. <laughs> The problem I've got with Sebastian Coe is the problem I have with a lot of posh people. I know they can't help being born posh. You couldn't help What's it, could you? It? Well, because you're twats, basically, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> it is true. It is true, isn't it? Where did you go to school? King's School, Canterbury. Is that a posh school? One of the oldest... <laughs> probably <laughs> poshest schools in the country. <laughs> you didn't stand a chance, did you? I was fine until I met you. <laughs> <laughs> He'd never even chased a dragon until he met me. <laughs> He would have done if it was outside off stump. <laughs> no? And he brings it back to sport. Anyway, Co. Yes. Ovid. Yes. Lower class. <laughs> <laughs> David, you must have the answer. Come was on. It, was there something that they just avoided running against each other for so long? Was it just they just. Each were cowards, basically. It's correct for three points. Well, Thank you. Yes, according to the tabloids of the time, Coe and Ovet each accused each other of cowardice and of deliberately avoiding a showdown on the track. Sebastian Coe went on to become a leading light in John Major's government. He set his personal best for the 800 metres, running the length of Downing Street, shouting, Norma's coming home early. Quick, wipe it on the curtains. <laughs> Steam, your wrangle involves the best all-round athlete of the decade. Daley Thompson steaming ahead and uh, Kratzmer coming into second place. Kratzmer, 10.45 is good. It's a better one, it's a better one, it's a better one, it's a better one! Yes! That is the true competitor. I've got the big G, boys, the big G. That was Daley Thompson on his way to his second successive decathlon gold at the Los Angeles Olympics of 1984. But why did Thompson have a big fallout with our very own royal family, Gary's team? What do you think of these decathletes then, um, Chris? I mean, I think they are the athletes. They're the supermen. You've got two days to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, and imagine, the, what's the Gary Lineker decathlon then? The 100-centimetre dash. <laughs> was oh. it something to do with... Um, Royal, it's a knockout. Did he compliment Princess Anne on her horse costume? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Anne. Why the long face? <laughs> <laughs> what was the answer? It wasn't there something to do with. Didn't he make a joke yeah, to Princess Anne about sleeping together and getting married and kids having and children? It's correct for three points, yeah. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> It all dates back to the moment when Daly won the second gold and Princess Anne came onto the track to congratulate him. At the press conference afterwards, he was asked what she'd said. He replied, she told me I'm a damn good looking guy. <laughs> then when asked if he was ever going to get married and who to, he said, you've just mentioned the lady. She said, I hope the babies will be white. <laughs> and 
At the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. Oh. We move on to Sporting Bluff now. David's team, we take you back to England's 1985-86 tour of the Caribbean when David Gower, as captain, managed to record an unprecedented tenth successive defeat against the West Indies, losing the series 5-0. Beautiful shot. Great stroke cut by Greenwich. Well done. Good catch. England star player Ian Botham was out of form after tabloid reporters revealed he was shagging Lindy Field, Miss Barbados. But how did the affair become public? Gary's team. Ian Botham's affair with Miss Barbados was uncovered when the pair broke the bed in Botham's hotel room. Ian Botham's affair with Miss Barbados was uncovered when Mick Jagger walked in on them at a party. Ian Botham's affair with Miss Barbados was uncovered when they were photographed together at Mike Gatting's barbecue. You know, Nick, it's very unfair of you to raise this question with David here because, of course, although he was there, I believe you were there, weren't you? He's already told us all that he can remember nothing from that period because yep. he was out of his yep. head on weapons-grade ganja the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he had to smoke it. He was only going to take the edge off the crack. He had a breakfast. <laughs> You must have played the fellas there, because like Stephen, we know Stephen loves a puff, look at him, he's out of there at the moment. <laughs> Give me a close up of those pupils, will you? Look at them. Look at the size of them. There's a couple of black holes, Stephen Hawkins at home, right now, a new theory based on them. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Barbados, was she, I imagine she was quite beautiful, was she? Once. Yeah. <laughs> beauty is but a fleeting thing. I know to look at David now you wouldn't think it, but he won a few <laughs> beauty prizes in his time. You know, he was Miss Marple three years in a row. You know? <laughs> I broke the bed during a bout of spectacular lovemaking once. <laughs> Fortunately, it was on Michelle's side, so Gary hasn't discovered it yet. But... <laughs> so, what were the other excuses for this deal then? Mick Jagger Mick coming. Mick Jagger. Around. Maybe they thought Mick Jagger coming in, but they just left the windows open and a dinghy had blown in from the port. <laughs> <laughs> I do a very good Mick Jagger impersonation. <laughs> Mick walked in. Nah! What the hell are you? <laughs> what are you doing, Aqui? Wow, well, I'm going to get a little satisfaction. <laughs> And then, <laughs> Beefy what? says, what? What? That's Mick Jagger. Gone yeah, now. That is like, there were blind people at home think they're watching Top of the Pops too. <laughs> Woo! Georgia Flash! <laughs> <laughs> I want to give you 10p for a cup of tea. <laughs> Can you imagine well, Mick Jagger, David No! <laughs> Stop it now! David I'm after okay. Alistair McGowan's job. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, David, you must know the answer. Well, the allegation was the bed, the bed story. Hold on! What? No! We <laughs> haven't examined the third clue, the barbecue. <laughs> Have you lost leave of your senses, old man? <laughs> no, I've just lost the will to live. Maybe. <laughs> It probably was at a barbecue, because I know you said you enjoyed the barbecue. It was the only time on that tour you heard anyone say to him, well done, David. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke. The allegation was the broken bed, but his alibi was that his father-in-law was in the room at the time, so it can't have been true. You think that Chris was telling the truth? Let's yeah. see if you're right. Yes, Chris had the answer. Ian Botham's dalliance hit the headlines when their nighttime antics broke their bed. However, the truth is that a News of the World journalist who'd already bought Miss Barbados's story soared through the bed legs to make sure they broke. David Gow was actually in the room next door at the time when he was woken by the sound of splintering wood. He instinctively tucked his bat under his arm and walked into the wardrobe. <laughs> Gary's team, it's the man whose career epitomised British sport in the 80s, Eddie the Eagle Edwards. <laughs> 75 metres the scoreboard shows. That's a new British record, if confirmed. It's 55. The scoreboard showed 75, it's 55. 
Celine Dion beat Eddie the Eagle's best jump when she was only a child. Jürgen Klinsmann beat Eddie the Eagle's best jump when he was only a child. Sven Johan Eriksson beat Eddie the Eagle's best jump when he was only a child. Can I ask who I am? Why have I got this ridiculous Scum. badger on my head? <laughs> <laughs> because you'll do anything for money. <laughs> Go on, gal. Klinsmann. Yeah. He went downhill after he left Spurs, you see. Give it a groan, love a groan. That's that deathly hush that's horrible. Most people go downhill when they join Tottenham, don't they? You fat tart. Green light. Sven was ever, didn't it? I'm not doing any Sven jokes. Well, you think you're going to get a recall? Yeah. The answer. Um, it's, I read it, it's in it's Sven. So you think that Jonathan was telling the truth? Let's see if you're Definitely. right. Definitely. <laughs> yes, Jonathan told the truth. At the age of 15, Ericsson the Eagle jumped a personal best of 75 metres. That's four metres more than Eddie Edwards and 75 metres more than David Seaman. <laughs> Incidentally, poor old Eddie is now so down on his luck that he's been driven to offering his services in an activity catalogue, skiing with Eddie the Eagle at £89 a go. Just imagine the shame of having to offer yourself up as entertainment to board executives, like Eddie, or like <laughs> David Gower. <laughs> so the scores at the end of that round are See David's team with nine points and Gary's team with nine points. <laughs> For our regulars to feel a 1980s icon, Gary and Rory, you're up first this week. If you'd like to take your positions, you have 90 seconds to figure out who you're mauling. <laughs> <laughs> My suggestion to the two of you looks like a very special edition of Birds of a Feather. <laughs> <laughs> Can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay, and your time starts now. Ooh. <laughs> He's got lipstick on his fingers now. I got it. Is it a very bad high jumper? <laughs> Ooh. It's either posh spice. <laughs> oh my, I'm, I'm, you blindfold. Pass! Yeah, Alan, hold that. <laughs> No points for that, I'm afraid. So, go to be Jonathan to take that's your right. position. I've just realised who Stephen looks like. If you took Will Young's grotesque lantern jawed face <laughs> and morphed it with Gareth Gates' cute, more boyish face, look. <laughs> Can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> Okay, and your time starts now. <laughs> What's this? Is, that an, is it an earring? <laughs> is it Pat Butcher? <laughs> oh, I think it is Pat Butcher. He's holding candelabra. What's this? <laughs> is this um, Princess is it, Di's it? butler? <laughs> <laughs> there's no clues. He's wearing the Over cape. Over there, there's clues the other side. <laughs> right a bit. Right a bit. Right a bit. No, right, 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 right. right. Actually, carry on. Stop. Keep going. I can't get no. <laughs> get a pack off. What? Walk forward. Well, where am I? Keep going. Right. Oh. Right. There you what go. What the hell? <laughs> Hours. 
<laughs> is it the Crafty Cockney? Nope. Is it Bobby George? It is! Ah! So at the end of that round, Gary's team have nine points and David's team have twelve. We draw proceedings to a close by playing the name game, and of course, all today's sportsmen made their names during the 80s. The leaders go first, which is David's team. Bring it on. Stephen, could you pass those to Jonathan, please? All right, okay. Starting now. Oh, first name. Uh, first part of the name, it's a Brazilian football, I believe. First part, you wear it on your foot, in between your bare skin and the shoe. Sock. Second name, small thing, like a mouse, not a mouse. <laughs> Bigger than a mouse, a bit like a mouse, you find them all over London. It's not that. It's a rat, okay? Sock, sock rat, rat sock and teeth, remember that drug you have at the sock weekend? Sock Jeez, there you go, okay. <laughs> uh, English cricketer, first name, Rory sleeps with the parents of this animal. Uh, <laughs> often seen Calf. frolicking and gambling. Oh, little lamb. Lamb. Alan Lamb. Alan Lamb, well done. All right, well, snooker player, you should get this. When you climb on top of a lady, some people say, he has successfully... Doug Mountjoy. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Doug Mountjoy, well done, Stephen. Okay, all right. This is a darts player. First name. If you were tiny and rode a small horse, you would be a not a dwarf, not a leprechaun, not a fairy, not a pixie. <laughs> a Frankie the Tory. Right. You would be a. It's still a jockey. Yeah, a jockey. Wilson. Yeah, well, jockey Wilson. Well done. Oh. Good luck. Good luck, boys. Come and on. your time starts now. He's a crap skier. Very good indeed. He's a silver medalist in the 3,000 metres in Los Angeles. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put you oh, on the... Roland, Mark Roland. It's a lady. I should have told you that. <laughs> like a fox. A fox is cunning or... Sly. Sly. Oh, yeah. When is sly. Oh, yeah. When is sly. Well done, mate. He won the FA Cup with Wimbledon in 88. And he's... Jones. And it'll wait. A bit it's more. Hard. You can have some clues if you want. <laughs> his surname's like a tire. Well, his name of a tire, in fact. Those 12 months weren't Mitch. bad. Mitch. Those 12 Goodyear. months weren't good year. Good year. And their first name bad. of India. Anderson. You know when. His first name. <laughs> you know when the show is, is not recorded, it's. Live good year. Live. It's nearly not live. <laughs> Goodyear is so close, and you just have to think of a, a man's Christian name that sounds like live. <laughs> Livingston. Livingston? <laughs> it sounds even more like live. <laughs> 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 So, Gary's team have 14, but this week's winner is David's team with 19. Yes. Our thanks to David, Jonathan and Stephen, Gary, Rory and Chris. Join us next week for the first of our new series proper, which will be set in the current decade, with Rory supplying jokes from the 1930s. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. Dinner Ladies. On BBC Two in a couple of minutes, that's Victoria Woods Dinner Ladies. Here on BBC One, after the news, Patrick Keelty's back for a new series with guests George Best and Badly Drawn Boy.